you're a red owner, you have to know this. Everybody else, strap in and enjoy the ride. ISO Tonal Range Redistribution is one of the keys to achieving optimal image quality on the red Komodo. Nobody talks about it and everybody seems to miss its importance. It's counterintuitive, back to front, and completely different to any other camera brand ISO implementation. Let's get into it. Hey, buddy. Whoa. Who are you, man? Red have separated ISO amplification and subsequently filtration from the initial image capture. Main downfall of this is that no filtration occurs when ISO is implemented post-capture on the RED's camera system, meaning ISO cannot be used in the conventional way of boosting shadows in low-key scenes, as on RED cameras, this will lead to noisy image. The benefit of this is that full tonal range or dynamic range of the sensor is preserved regardless of the ISO setting. The red sensor always records at its sensor's native ISO. So ISO settings do not affect photo side's saturation like they do on other cameras. Therefore, red doesn't have, so to speak, native ISO setting, but ISO 800 is not a random number plucked out from the sky by red technicians. ISO 800 refers to tonal steps distribution within the tonal range of the sensor. At 800, the tonal steps are at an equilibrium, meaning equally distributed for shadows and highlights. As you can see here, 800 would be red's base ISO with the equal distribution of dynamic range to top and bottom. This is why red recommends 800 as a good starting point, as it is the most versatile ISO. But unlike other camera brands, this doesn't mean other ISOs have less dynamic range, only that other ISOs have a different tonal steps mapping. On a red camera, every color channel has over 65,000 tonal steps. So this chart has been simplified for visibility. But what is important to see here is that depending on the ISO setting, the middle gray point will be reallocated or remapped on the tonal range. This does not affect the amount of tonal range, but it does affect what the camera thinks middle gray is. This is why ISO in the red system is called a flood, as it instructs the camera how to interpret the raw data and what to concentrate on, the shadows or the highlights. On other camera brands, this is baked in during capture, which has several negative effects like changing dynamic range depending on the ISO setting. But as the red, does it after image capture, it does not affect sensor performance. Hence the notion that ISO in the red system doesn't matter, but as ISO is still an integral and unavoidable part of recording, this is wrong. ISO in the red Komodo simply has a different implementation, but an equally important one for optimal image quality. This is also where it works completely different to how you might be otherwise familiar with as this tonal remapping makes the ISO work counterintuitively. As you go above or below 800 ISO, the tonal steps are remapped, either adding more stops above middle gray or more stops below middle gray, respectively. The tonal dynamic range doesn't change, so clipping will not be affected, but the amount of stops allocated to the top and bottom of the scene do have several implications. At low ISOs below 800, more tonal steps are added to the shadows and taken away from the highlights, improving noise performance, shadow color saturation, lowering shadow contrast, making the footage, in my opinion, more cinematic with milky blacks akin to, say, an Alexa. But also, it takes away from the highlight performance, making the highlights more abrupt, harsher, more contrasted. You could even say less pleasing and more video-esque-like. That's why RED doesn't recommend going below ISO 400 or even 640 without precise scene lighting control, as below 400, the top stops of the dynamic range of the sensor become less usable, and if you're not careful, can have a detrimental impact on image quality. At higher ISOs, above 800, tonal steps are added to the highlight portion of the scene, but are taken away from the shadows. This improves highlight performance, Although clipping will not be affected like on other cameras, it still offers more highlight 
clipping protection as the highlight roll off will become more gradual and pleasing as it will occur over more tonal steps. Activating Red's famous film emotion like highlight roll off. Also probably why CineD's lab tests fell short of showcasing Komodo's full dynamic range as you would need to use high ISOs to fully activate the top stops of the tonal range. Red recommends not to go over ISO 2000 as because of the lack of ISO amplification filtration, anything above might have a very bad noise floor. However, this is something that is improving with every generation of Red cameras. In my experience, anything above 3200 is really unusable. Why Red has ISO of 12,800 is uh, well, mind-boggling, really. <laughs> in my opinion, high ISOs in the Red produce footage with the most dynamic range, lowering contrast in the highlights, making them bloom less, appearing more controlled, akin to something like a high-end Sony or Canon scene camera. The shadows also seem to become more crushed and um, more contrasted. But in my opinion, this just adds to the high dynamic range look. High ISOs definitely offer the most flexibility in post and are an essential step to take when filming in high key scenes like sunny outdoors. So on the red Komodo, you should use ISOs of 800 to 2000 for high key scenes to get the most performance out of the highlights and ISOs of 800 to 400 or 640 for low key scenes to get the best noise and shadow performance. This is completely different to what you might be used to. So this is why it can be tricky to use a red camera and perhaps why so many sell their beloved Komodos. I guess the best way to sum all this up is that on the RED camera system, ISO doesn't control the physical light the sensor receives, but only the digital way it interprets it. Even though technically metadata or a flood, its use and implementation are still central to optimizing your exposure and image quality. You think that kind of automation is easy or cheap?